so <clears throat> we continue to think the same topic so we are going to hebrews 5 i just i am just uh, discussing what we have discussed till last uh, sunday hebrews 6 uh, the scripture says let us lay aside let us go on uh, therefore leaving the discussion of the elementary principles or lay aside the discussion of the elementary principles let us go on to perfection so the unfortunate thing we have discussed even the foundation the present day christianity nobody is sure so we are just thinking the foundation then going on to uh, the higher things so the basic six basic tenets or precepts on which the Christian teaching is founded. Just I'm repeating, repentance, faith, baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection, and sixth one, eternal judgment. Eternal judgment. Take six, Hebrew six. Now these six, six things, sir, it's not no use of knowing it by heart, but we should know. These, these are the basic foundations of Christian faith. The first one is repentance. Repentance, then just a logical application of your mind will give the answer. Repentance and faith, then baptisms, then laying on of hands is nothing but endowment of the spiritual gifts. Symbolically, the laying on of hands is being done, but the power is from the Holy Spirit because with, without the power of the Holy Spirit, you cannot live the Christian life. Then resurrection and eternal judgment. The all the all the other things other than <coughs> repentance we have gone through it. Then repentance is the the beginning because in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve they did sin, they have gone away from God. So when Adam and Eve or when Adam did sin, we were all in Adam. So when Adam died, we all died. That is logic. So the end of humanity is spiritually dead. A similar statement we are reading in Hebrews. Can you tell me the similar statement? Sure. When Adam did sin, we were in Adam. When Adam died, we all have died. Same or similar statement is there. One line. No. no, no. Tithe. When yeah. Abraham. When Abraham, Abraham gave tithe to Melchizedek, we all have given tithe to Melchizedek. When Levi was there at that time in Abraham. Same way. So, the, so the end of humanity have died spiritually and have gone away from God. So the first step is just to return. That is repentance. Everybody is going away from God. So the first step a human being is to do to turn to God is that is turning to God or repentance. So slowly all the, just I am discussing the previous day's discussion. So Jesus started preaching repent and believe in the gospel. Apostles preached repent and believe in the gospel. Then Paul detailed it that uh, repentance uh, uh, in detail he told Acts 26 verse 20 that will read just just for the continuation we'll come in. It is to remind last day's discussion, otherwise we will forget. Just read 26 20 Acts. But declare first to those in Damascus and in Jerus Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent, turn to God, and do works befitting repentance. Yeah. So the apostolic teaching is, turn to God, then how your repentance will be revealed. If no fruit of repentance means that is not right repentance. That is what Paul preached. Turn to God and bear fruits of repentance. From the Fruit only we can come to know that the repentance is true or not. If no fruit, it's a duplicate repentance that we have to judge. So then we have discussed about the, the preaching of John the Baptist because John the Baptist came to prepare a way for the Lord. Same way, without repentance, the Lord cannot be born in our life or the Lord cannot be born in our hearts. And the preaching of John, first he taught, don't take pride that you are the children of Abraham. Then those who are having two tunics, give one to the one who is not having. Then 
then the containment containment of the soldiers soldiers also came to him and asked what we have to do he told be contented with whatever you have that's what we discussed now mm, that is the theoretical part when we when we are seeing the practical demonstration of repentance we will get a better understanding of true repentance going to luke chapter 19 you all know it luke chapter 19 when we are reading i will just read that uh, incident then jesus entered and passed through jericho now behold there was a man named sakeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich so he was a chief sakeus was chief tax collector and he was rich and he sought to see who jesus was but could not because of the crowd for he was a he was of short stature so he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him for he was going to pass that way and when jesus came to the place he looked up and saw him and said to him sakeus may haste and come down for today i must stay at your house so he made haste and came down and received him joyfully but when they saw it they all complained saying he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner then sakeus stood and said to the lord look lord i have i give half of my goods to the poor and if i have taken anything from anyone by false accusation i restore fourfold and jesus said to him today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of abraham so this is the only one incident in the ministry of jesus where he himself certified that this man is saved or born again. So this is the only one case. So how it happened, it is our duty to study because Sakeus was a tax collector and uh, he was very rich. If you are reading all the gospels, all the four gospels, we can come to know tax collectors were very much rejected and uh, um, a community of sinners. Everybody hate them because they are making money illegally, everybody knows, by false accusation. When I read the history of that uh, Roman uh, province or Roman ruling, two types of ties were there. One is permanent ties, nobody can do anything, is uh, permanent, it is decided by the government. The other one, it is based upon the business and all, the tax collector can decide how much you have to pay. So. Same as what we are seeing in our countries, the tax collector will read them, then they will give money to tax collector to reduce the tax amount. So the tax collector would become very rich. So he was very rich, but he he just wanted to see Jesus because Jesus became very famous by that time. So when Jesus saw him, he told him that today he, I would be staying with you. Then he came down. The repentance of Sakeus only we want to discuss. Then verse 8. Then Sakeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. So let us recollect the preaching of John the Baptist. So his, as far as human life is con concerned, his first condition of repentance was those who are having two tunics, one he would give to the poor or one who is not having one so here the same you can see from the from his saving or from his wealth he was willing to give 50 percent to the poor it does not mean that we are to give 50 percent or 60 percent but if you do not have a uh, what is called love and affection towards the poor as a result of your repentance that repentance is not biblical repentance. So we, when we are reading the, the ministry of Paul, Paul was taught the gospel directly by the Lord. We know it. So when after 14 years, he went to Jerusalem to put forward his gospel to the apostles. After detailing his gospel and everything, the apostles did not add anything to his gospel. But one condition he taught, we know it. What was that condition? 
no. not condition no. so you have to remember no. the no. Two. No. good to see galatians chapter 2 so why we are thinking that aspect is because if we do not have a soft delicate heart towards the poor that is not a biblical repentance galatians chapter 2 I'm not reading um, everything. Uh, to then after 14 years, I went up to went again to Jerusalem with the Barnabas and also took Titus with me. And I went up by revelation and uh, communicated to them that that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to those who were of reputation, lest by any means. I might run or hard run in vain. We many times we discussed why Paul um, just uh, presented his gospel to the apostles. The reason, if it is not an apostolic gospel, it is of no use. So we have to remember our faith, our teaching, and everything. If it is not conforming to the apostolic doctrine, finally all our faith is going into vain. So it is our duty to check whether our faith is according to apostolic teaching because this is now it is 2000 years past and many rivers have flown into the, the Christian ocean. So many unscriptural practices right from the first century. We can see even in first century, lot of false preachers, false teachings. We can see in Jude, Jude is warning about false prophets. Peter is warning about false prophets. John is warning about false, false prophets. Then Paul is. So in first century itself, all the evil teachings started. Now then think of the present condition after 2000 years. So there is no other way but to filter all unscriptural things from our faith. Otherwise, our faith, faith is going to be in vain. So only Paul said, he presented his gospel to the apostles, lest by any means I might run or hard run in vain. Reading down, then when you're coming to 9 onwards, and when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. They decided only that we should remember the poor, the very thing which I also was eager to do. So think about our repentance. Do we have a very great concern and compassion towards the poor as a result of Christ coming into our life? So is there any difference in our life towards our, atti towards our attitude to the poor? Otherwise, our repentance is having some problem. So coming back to Luke 19, so the Sakyos is telling, I will give part, half to the poor. See, that's what I'm telling. It is not a rule like 50% you have to give to the poor, nothing. It is according to your goodwill, good gesture, but definitely you should have a compassion towards the poor. So Jesus also, many times he told, so you give to the poor. Is it not? In, even on the Sermon on the Mount, he was telling, you give to the poor. So that was a Christian teaching. So as a sign of repentance, if we do not have any change of attitude towards the poor, that is not a biblical repentance. Then what is the second thing he did? That is also part of the repentance. What is the second thing? What else do you think? First, he, was, he decided to give his wealth to the poor. And even in the case of uh, Cornelius, why and how his prayers were answered, why his hands? He was giving to the poor. Yeah, he, 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 he was doing two things, giving to the poor and next, no, recollect, I stand, giving to the poor, he was a man, no, there is a particular character is given, I stand. Can you will be? Now you find out his character. He was giving to the poor and 
No. God yeah, fear God. So fear of God and helping the poor both going in hand in hand. If you are really fearing the God, when somebody who is deprived of the things which you are having, then definitely you will open your heart. That's a sign of repentance. So the second thing Sakyus did is um, verse 8. Sakyus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. So it, it's not that you have to restore fourfold, but any injustice or any financial um, malpractice you did before you came to the Lord, you have to restore it. If you are not, say, you are a person, you worked in some government department receiving a lot of bribe, just like the Sakyus, he was, he was working for the Roman government, receiving bribe. In that way only tax collectors are becoming rich. Mm -hmm. So he decided whatever he illegally poss possessed in his life, he wanted to pay it back. So if we are, it is called a restitution. Nowadays, the 21st century Christianity, nobody is teaching restitution or to do to do something to compensate your compensate to the sins of the past life. Nobody is preaching. The, the best thing what people used to do is they will stop doing Sin. the evil things. So they used to tell, now I, I became a new creation. Everything is new. Everything past is gone. So I do not know what all has happened in my past life. No. Here Sakavis, Sakavis is telling, I will restore fourfold. So even in the law, if you are going to Numbers 5, Number in law also, if you want to get forgiveness, you should have restituted. Numbers 5. Numbers 5. Uh, sorry, number, just I need to read full. Five words, uh, six onwards. You just read. Speak to the children of Israel. When a man or woman commits any sin, that men commit in unfaithfulness against the Lord, and that person is guilty, then he shall confess the sin which he has committed. He shall make restitution for his trespass in full, plus one fifth of it, and give it to the one he has wronged. But if the man has no relative to whom restitution may be made for the wrong, the restitution for the wrong must go to the Lord. For the priest, in addition to the ram of atonement with which atonement is made for him. Yeah. Read. Every offering of all the holy things of the children of Israel, which they bring to the priest, shall be his. Yeah, so here, here again the same thing. So speak to the children of Israel, when a man or woman commits any sin, that men commit in unfaithfulness against the Lord, and that person is guilty. So, just bringing a ram or a goat or bull and killing it or offering as a uh, sacrifice on the altar, it will never, it will never remove the sin. The first thing he should confess his sin, uh, verse 7, then he shall Confess the sin. The first step of repentance is confession. You have to admit that you are guilty. You are confessing. So mere confession cannot remove or cannot bring the forgiveness. That's what Sakeus did. As in New Testament we are seeing Sakeus did. So his willingness to give to the poor, then a desire to restitute the past sins. Here what is written in the law is, Sure. He shall confess the sin which he has committed. He shall make restitution for his trespass in full plus one-fifth of it and give it to the one he has wronged. Suppose we uh, we have stolen some money. Means maybe from government or from individual or we, we cheated the government in tax or title deed, whatsoever it is. 
if you have cheated the government for 100 rupees, then when you are paying it back, so inflation and all these things are always there in the society. But God has fixed, fixed that 20% extra you have to give, one fifth means 20%. So if you have cheated somebody or cheated government, what's all it is? Because government, if you're cheating government, nobody will come and ask you. So cheating government is less serious or more serious? More serious. More serious. Because cheating government is the same as cheating God. Cheating individual is human, that is a human being. Because cheating government is the same as uh, cheating God, because every government is being instituted by God. So if you are not willing to restitute for your past financial unfaithfulness, so instead of 100, you have to pay by 120. Then confess, restitute, then bring the bull or ram as a sacrifice. Then you are symbolically your sins will be forgiven. So that was what demanded. Now also, now instead of Ram, the blood of the Lord, the sacrificial death of the Lord, but you have to first confess, then restitute. Or what are the things say? Certain things we cannot restitute. We misbehaved with your parents in the past life and by the time you are turning to Lord, they are no more. Then what you can do? You cannot do anything. You see, is it not? Then you have to ask forgiveness to the Lord. Certain things you cannot restitute. Certain sins you cannot restitute. So if it's a financial unfaithfulness, you have to you can restitute. That is the simplest or the easiest thing to repay. Say you misbehaved with somebody or certain sins and these sort of things, only you can ask forgiveness from the Lord. Then your confession and the extent of repentance is what is going to be counted. So you have to restitute, confess, restitute, then no. It is not the blood of Ram, but the blood of the Lord, his death, the trust, faith in the Lord. So we should know that it is mere confession cannot bring the salvation. You have to repent. The repentance must be according to scripture. In the case of Zacchaeus, he, he has decided to pay it back fourfold. So in our case, no need to pay fourfold. At least 20% extra you have to pay back. Confess a genuine confession. Confession is no, really the real confession is it's not that we are sorry about the past sin. It's a decision to it's a decision to not repeat. Not repeat and sorry about the past and a decision to not to repeat. That's if you are genuine in your decision, it's the right repentance. Then you have to repent, restitute, then ask the forgiveness of the Lord solely. If you are going to uh, Acts 20 verse 20 verse 20. So actually nowadays the faith is preached but not repentance. Acts 20 verse 20. How I kept back nothing that was so cool but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house. Testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance toward toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. So the apostles preaching <coughs> repentance towards God and faith, faith toward, toward, toward Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. So it is it should be the same today. So now mostly the faith is preached. You have to trust <coughs> in the Lord, believe in Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. That is or speaking to the Philippine jailer. So see, you, you have to take the scripture as a whole. In the day of Pentecost, when Peter preached, what was the first words he preached? Repent. <laughs> Repent and Peter is preaching. Repent. <laughs> At least uh, we have to study the biblical repentance and the writing. Also, uh, what was the preaching of Peter 2 verse 39, Acts 2 39. 38. So at least, uh, see, we have to learn from the scripture and from the scripture only. 2 verse 38, Acts 2 38. 
Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so Peter is preaching because in apostolic time or the biblical time or the according to biblical culture, the <coughs> baptism became a synonym for belief, faith in Jesus. So it is not the baptism, but it is faith. But the, according to Bible, actually, what is depicted in the Bible, you cannot separate between faith in Jesus and baptism. So it became a synonym. So when the baptism is mentioned in the Bible, it is faith in Jesus. But now 2000 years passed. Now, baptism is not having any connection with the faith, faith in Jesus. Jesus. It is only an external act. Surely nobody is becoming born again. Just taking baptism, no faith. So nothing is happening inside. But in biblical time, we have to know it. That is biblical concept, but we have to clearly understand. So Peter told, repent. It is same as repent and believe in Jesus, but he used the word <laughs> repent and take baptism. If you are going to Acts 22 verse 16, the same picture you can see. So when you are reading it, you should not come to your own conclusion. That is, that, that's what the word is given to us. Acts 22 verse 16 if you are reading. Also comes, also some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us and brought Acts them. Acts 22. 16, and 22. now, why are you waiting? Yeah. Arise and be baptized. Mm -hmm. Wash away your sins. You see, the Ananias is telling Paul, Paul, arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. See, people are making wrong conclusions after reading something which is which is a picture language and nothing wrong in it, but you have to know what is happening. Otherwise, you will be just uh, uh, people without any knowledge. Just it, it would be like Jesus told the Pharisees, you break down this temple, I will build it in three days. They understood that the literal temple, but Jesus made his own body. Same way, 22 verse 16, Ananias is telling Paul, you rise up and take baptism and wash away sins. the sins. It's not baptism which is washing away the sins, but it is faith, repentance and faith. And again, same picture you can see if you are going to First Peter 3. So when we are reading this sort of paragraphs and passages, we have to understand it accurately. So, 21. There, there is also an antitype which now saves us baptism, not the removal of the fifth of the flesh, but the answer of good conscience. To, to, to God. Through the so here, see, there is also an antitype. Antitype means prototype or figure. There is also a antitype which now saves us. So if you are taking only the verse 21 and if you start preaching, the baptism is saving you, you will be the number one fool as far as scripture is concerned. There is also an antitype which now saves us. What is baptism? So can baptism save anybody? No. So we have to understand the scripture accurately and with the, the, the accurate meaning. Otherwise, we will be misled. That is what we are seeing. People used to think. So from our experience, we can say from, uh, from our conversation with many people, many people of the churches where the salvation is taught, they are thinking that they are saved because they have taken baptism. That means none of them is saved. None of them is born again. Only when they are standing in front of the judgment seat of the Lord, then only they would come to know that they have never received salvation. So the, the baptism is an antitype or prototype of some reality. The reality is faith in Jesus. That is what is written. There is also an antitype which in, which now saves us baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the 
answer of a good conscience. All Malayalam translations are wrong. It is the answer of a good conscience. If you are going to Malayalam translation, it is written. It is the no. Uh, what is it? No, that is totally wrong. It is this is very accurate. It is the answer. Answer of a it is the answer of a good conscience. So how can you clean your conscience? How can you clear your conscience? So then can you tell accurately from I'm giving you a clue? The answer must be from Hebrews. How can you clear your conscience? One select can you tell me? The baptism is the answer of a good conscience. No human being is having good conscience because Adamic race all with the evil heart and bad conscience. Baptism should come as an answer of a good conscience. Then it is our duty to find out how you can make your conscience clear or good. So, uh, but it's the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection. through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, it is through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if your conscience is not clear, the baptism is invalid and it's not having any value. The clearing of the conscience only saves you or justifying you. Then how can you clear your conscience? Then it can tell from Hebrews. Jijok. You go to Hebrews 9 verse 14. So we should know it. See, without knowing the theory, you cannot practice our faith. Hebrews 9 14. And how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience? From dead works to serve the living God. Yeah. How much more shall the blood of Christ? Means it is written before that it is written that the uh, the animal sacrifices and sprinkling of the ash, these sort of things. How much more shall the blood of Christ? Hebrews 9 40, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, Offered himself without spot to God, cleans your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So, if your conscience is not cleansed, you cannot serve the living God. And the conscience is cleansed not because of baptism, but because of the blood of Christ. Blood of Christ means it is not the literal blood, it is his death. So, many, many people used to think that the blood of Christ saves. So the Bible is totally misunderstood in 21st century people who tell the blood of Christ saves means. What is the meaning? Blood of Christ saves means. In other words, we should know otherwise. See, many people they when they are praying, they will say blood of Christ, blood of Christ, blood of Christ, these sort of things. See, see. Sony, what is the meaning of the blood of Christ? Yeah, death of Christ. So the death, if you are reading. The same Hebrews 9 verse 16. For where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all while the testator lives. So the new testament is established by the death of Jesus. So the blood of Jesus means it's the death of Jesus. So here it is written, our conscience is being cleansed by the blood of Jesus means by the death of Jesus. He became a substitutional death for our sins. He became a sacrifice in place of us. He died in our place. In that way, we are redeemed or our conscience became cleansed to serve the Lord. And baptism is the answer of the good conscience. So if you are taking baptism without your conscience is being clean, so that baptism is having zero value. Zero value, not zero value, some negative value is there because you are bringing the Son of God to disgrace through your life. You cannot say it is zero value. It is having 
definitely it is having a negative impact because you are mocking the son of man in front of the world. It's a very serious crime. You cannot take it lightly. So again, so baptism again, it, it is it is not the removal of the bodily filth, but it is the no, you should not means uh, uh, misunderstand the terminology. It is the answer of a good, good conscience. conscience. So it is the answer of a co good conscience. So when Peter preached, he told, repent and take baptism in the name of Jesus. There again, see, lot of controversies in the Bible. Actually, it is not controversy if you are rightly understanding. He's telling, get baptized in the name of Sorry. Jesus. So you towards you have a lot of false cries and false teachings. Here read two verse 30, once more you read. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. See, see, from that word, one cult developed. You know which is that. Hmm? No? No. So, not baptism. So, Jesus name, there is a cult, Jesus name, because their baptism is not in the triune in God. They are baptizing in the name of Jesus, whereas, don't you know about it? There is a cult called Jesus. Yeah, there is a cult which is called Jesus, Jesus name. So they are baptizing not in the name of Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. They will baptize only in the name of Jesus. Then they can show a lot of scriptures from the Bible. So they will baptize in the name of Jesus. So your baptism is not correct. The apostles baptized in the name of Jesus. See, all evil teachings, they have something in the scripture to cite. Here, even the preaching of Peter himself, if you are taking, he, he asked the people to get baptized in the name of Jesus. But they are forgetting the commandment of the, the Lord himself. The last, the great commission of the Lord, if you are going to Matthew 28, you have to remember it. That's what I'm telling. If you are reading Bible with a good heart, you will never be misled. But if you if you are thinking with a uh, wrong attitude, everything will be wrong. So twenty the Great Commission you read you will read. As it twenty eight last year. All authority has yeah. has been given to me in heaven and, and on earth. Yeah. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Yes, yeah, see, here Jesus Himself taught you have to baptize in the name of Father, Father Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. See, it is our duty to study the scripture. There is no other way but to study because. The, the, the most popular Malayalam translation, the Satyavadus, it is totally wrong. That word is totally wrongly translated. So, the, the order of the teaching of Jesus is make disciples and baptize yes. them and teach. Whereas, in Satyavadus, the first thing you have to do is baptize, then teach, then make disciples. Just opposite of the real truth. For which Lord is not responsible, it is our duty to study it accurately. And incidentally, it is good to remember this commandment of the Lord is known as the Great Commission of the Lord. So, Great Commission is having three different things. Tingu, can you tell? It's very important to know. The Great Commission of the Lord is having three elements. Can you tell? Let's just know what we, we read the three things. Did you? Yeah. Make disciples. Make disciples. Make disciples. Baptize. 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 Teach them to observe. Teach them to observe. All, all things. All. underline the word all. Teach them to observe all yes. what I have Imagine. taught you. I have commanded. So it's a totally forgotten. The true Christianity is totally forgotten. 
even the commandment of the lord is forgotten totally so the first step is making disciples yes, and you are permitted only to baptize those who are becoming disciples so the first thing is you have to ensure that the one who is coming for taking baptism is a disciple so we cannot know we have to trust their confession so you think this is on the day of pentecost the apostles baptized to 3000 they believed only their words of confession am i correct they cannot so the same day they baptized 3000 people still solely if somebody is coming to take baptism we normally we do not interview them or analyze their life we are trusting their confession because the one who is confessing is responsible for <coughs> his life you cannot just tell anything in regard with the lord if you are confessing that jesus is my lord we believe it and jesus also believes it because he has given free will and freedom so once if you are confessing we are duty bound to live for him no escape nobody can escape because jesus believes whatever we are confessing so you have to ensure that one is deciding to live as a disciple of the lord then you have to baptize only the disciples only two by thirty is over the third step is it should continue till the death of the individual you have to teach all. no you have to underline all so nowadays who is teaching all some people will teach 20 percent some may teach 40 percent some may not take even the responsibility of teaching with the baptism everything is finished then they will start testifying we are born again we are saved no you are joining a course you have to study it is just like you say you are joining a degree course it is true you joined a degree course you can say you you have come you got a degree you can say anticipating that you are completing the course in that way it is true you can say i am saved but it is conditional is it not when adam and the created and they were kept in the garden of eden in fact they had eternal life they had eternal life but subject to one condition is it not so adam and he never they would have died provided they had not eaten from that tree so they had eternal life god did not create man to die but to have eternal life but there was one condition same way we are saved but subject to certain conditions so the only condition is you have taken a decision you confess that you are going to obey the lord in everything so only jesus uh, paul when he still testifying about his ministry if you are going to acts 20 verse 27 acts 20 27 you read for i have not yeah son to declare to you the whole counsel of god yeah see so we have to consider why he made a statement like that acts 20 verse 27 See, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. So from that we can understand the first century Christianity. There were still people who were not proclaiming the whole counsel of God. So Paul is telling, I have never shunned or kept back the whole counsel of God from you. You are reading the same 20, verse 27, Acts 20, 27. By 27 we read, uh, then coming to 2nd Corinthians, 2nd Corinthians 2 verse 17. For we, for we are not as so many peddling the word of God, but as of insulting, but as from God we speak in the sight of God in Christ. See, we are not like many who are peddling, peddling, NIV if you are reading, if you read, two words. Unlike so many. Do not peddle the word of peddle the same word is not then just I know, yeah. Some translation so we are not like hucksters. Huckster means huckster means Tingo, you know what is the meaning of huckster. Huckster is somebody who selling the things. So, so selling for profit. Paul is telling we are not some people who are selling the word of God for profit. We can see in 21st century. It is the 
ultimate evil. See how many people they are becoming billionaires, millionaires by selling the word of God or using the name of the Lord. And uh, on the day of judgment, Judas will be means uh, he would be nothing, no, in comparison to the 21st century traitors. Jesus, no, see Judas, poor man, he got only 30 silver coins. Now 30 billion people are making, 30 million people are making. See, Paul is telling we are not like many others or high stairs. <laughs> so even in first century, there are people who are making money using the name of the Lord. Again, if you are going to Second Corinthians 4, the starting. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. Yeah, we but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in Christian Christianity, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding also to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Yes, yeah, see, just to, you have to read it, Second Corinthians 4 verse 2. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame. See, making profit out of the scripture or using the name of the Lord if you are making money, it's a shameful thing. But in 21st century, nobody is ashamed of it. And many people are feeling proud about it, making money, becoming rich. And when they are starting the ministry, they were poor. After some time, they are becoming rich. Then they will say, God blessed. Then what happened to Paul? Paul was rich when he entered in the ministry, but after so many years, he was telling, now I do not have anything. I missed everything. I lost everything for the sake of the Lord. But now the opposite of the original truth is being preached. People are becoming rich. No, you can become rich by job or business. It's nothing wrong. But using the name of the Lord, if you are becoming rich, you are a hackster. So it is written. We, we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor, this is important, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. They had a good conscience. Their conscience was cleansed by the blood of the Lord. They were incapable of doing anything against their conscience. So if, as born-again people, are we sincere to our conscience? Are we sensitive to our conscience? If you are neglecting your own conscience, what will happen? What ultimately, <coughs> what, what would happen? If you are neglecting your own conscience, what will happen? happen? If you are neglecting your own conscience, hmm? no, it's clearly written. You have to answer the scriptural things from the scripture. If you are neglecting your conscience, if you are not sincere to your conscience, when conscience is telling you should not do it, and if you are doing, ultimately what would happen? God will forsake. No, no, see, what is written? That is true, but what is written? Just like Paul used to tell, what does the scripture say? If you are going to... No, yeah, 1 Timothy 1, 19. Having faith and a good conscience, yeah. some having rejected concerning the faith of suffered shipwreck. Yeah. Having faith and a uh, good conscience. Yeah, 18 onwards. This, this charge. charge I commit to you, Son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare having faith and a good conscience, which some having rejected. See, if you are rejecting the good conscience, conscience is very delicate, where the God is working. If when God is telling you something, and if you are rejecting it, ultimately having rejected concerning faith and uh, having faith and a good conscience, which some having rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck. shipwreck. So the faith is shipwrecked means a ship sailing in the water. If it is shipwrecked means there is no more ship, no ship. So the faith, there is no more faith. So our faith in the Lord is preserved by keeping a good conscience. 
So the conscience, the sensitivity of conscience varies from person to person. According to your love towards the Lord, your conscience will be different. You take the case of King David. The Saul was chasing David to kill him. Is it not? You know the history. At one, one occasion, David got an opportunity to kill Saul, but he took a small piece of his garment. Afterwards, his conscience started tormenting him because he raised his hand against the gods anointed. So that was the sensitivity of the conscience of David. Then what about our conscience? How far as New Testament believers, our conscience must be more sensitive than that of David towards his sin. When you are doing something which is not pleasing the Lord, we must be thoroughly disappointed. We must be grief stricken. We should lose our appetite when we are doing something wrong to the Lord. Otherwise, our conscience already started dying. See, you, you know the case of uh, leprosy patients. Surely you know leprosy patients. If you are touching, no, they would not come to know. All sensitivity is gone. Skin is not sensitive. So some believers, because of their familiarity with the sin, their conscience is already dead. When they are hearing that this is this is the true way of the Lord, and if they are going in something wrong direction, no problem. Yeah, everybody is like that. But you see, you are too answerable to your own life. You are not going to be judged along with your wife or uh, mother or wife, children, or even in your church people. No, nobody will be with you. You have to stand alone in front of the judgment seat of the Lord. So if you are not sensitive to your conscience, finally you will be put to shame, no doubt. So if you are not keeping right conscience, Ultimately, you will be losing your faith. faith. So coming back to uh, the case of the yeah, Arupan, once more I want to repeat. So the baptism in the Bible, it is it became a synonym for true faith in Jesus. So Peter preached, you have to take baptism in the name of Jesus. But the great commandment of Jesus is there, then if you are believing that, there is no need to have any confusion. It is only they mentioned the name of Jesus because people who are living in, before Jesus, they were baptized in the triunion name that Jesus is the, the new thing of the Jewish life. So just to mention the name of Jesus only, but it is always a triunion baptism. So again, if you are going throughout the book of Acts, nowhere it is written, they have taken baptism in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So only Jesus' name cult has come out. So many cult, so many false prophecies, so, so many, so many evil things. In between, if you want to become a good Christian, there is no other support, but you have to trust in the scripture and scripture alone. There is no other way. So coming back to the life of Sakharos. So what Sakharos did, so let us introspect. In total, we must have a change of heart towards the poor. Then whatever evil things we did before coming to the Lord, whatever things we can restitute, you have to restitute. So something you misbehaved with somebody, you misbehave, you cannot pay back by means of money. Then what you have to do? Yeah, you have to really, you should feel guilty about that. You have to ask forgiveness. So asking forgiveness to a person is, more difficult than paying 20% extra. Am I correct? Yes. Tony, what do you say? Yes. So, paying money is not a problem, but how can I okay. go down to such lower levels and asking forgiveness to somebody? It may be a younger person than you or inferior in this society, whatsoever it is. It is really difficult to ask forgiveness. I have experience with solely and telling you. I misbehaved with one man who was in my office was in a lower <coughs> position by mistake out of anger or something I did it. That moment onwards Holy Spirit started troubling me. So it was really I tell you, I find it very difficult to go and ask forgiveness, but I did it. That way I freed my conscience. Otherwise you cannot do it. So that is the sensitivity. And if if you are not doing it, one or two days go, Holy Spirit will remember you afterwards. You will forget it. Then 20% your conscience is dying. Another occasion again, if you are not obeying the Holy Spirit. And within 
within a course of time within within a short period of time your conscience will die and ultimately it will lead to Long the death of your faith or the faith will be destroyed and many people who are the so called born again people of the 21st century there is no conscience no sensitivity they do not bother you see how people are raising their fund in they will say it is to propagate the gospel that is only a coverage just like jesus not jesus judas told you could have sold it for 3000 dinars and you could have given to the poor but what was his real aim if money is coming to the treasury boys yeah, he can take right. same way people are telling it is for evangelization in gujarat or india or nepal they will raise fund and ultimately they are becoming rich maybe 10% they are using using in the field but the major part they will eat so it is the conscience is very important then don't forget the the three element great commission make disciples baptize them in the name of father son and the holy spirit then teach if not teaching it is totally you are disobeying the commandment of the lord you have to teach and again the word all is very important as far as law is concerned we know it those who are not following all the commandments they are under curse because nobody is totally disobeying the commandments so there the the important thing is all and unfortunately we have discussed in none of the malayalam translations they have the word all regarding the law see the people when they are translating they do not know even the elementary truth you cannot blame because the people who are translating these things they do not have any connection with the lord so making lot of mistakes those who are reading they are also making mistakes see there is no guarantee from god to ensure the quality of the translation the only the original writings it is inspired by the holy spirit but no translation is recommended by god it is our duty to study and find out the meaning so if you are not going to a church where the all counsel of lord is taught are going to destroy yourself you cannot blame any church or anything it is your duty to ensure that you are abiding in the all counsel of the lord so even in the law i'm just repeating the things in even in the law if you are doing something wrong you have to first confess restitute then sacrifice the wrong same way now also we have to confess what our restitution is possible we are asking forgiveness you have to ask forgiveness and if monetary things you have to do the monetary compensation then you have to trust in the death of the lord then your sins will be forgiven otherwise not because why i am telling it again and again 21st century nobody is teaching these things but the word of the god is remaining unchanged heaven and earth will pass away but my words will stand forever so coming to the uh, luke chapter 19 because a right foundation if we do not have we cannot lead a right christian life verse 8 the sacos stood and said to the lord look lord i give half of my goods to the poor and if i have taken anything from anyone by false accusation i restore fourfold and jesus said to him today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of god see the sacrifice did not tell any of the other things but only he declared his uh, repentance in matters of earthly possession wealth so it is you can take it for granted if you are rightly repentant in matters of the wealth money definitely all the other things will be okay so only jesus told now salvation has come to this house the the most difficult thing for human beings is to part with the earthly wealth so like jesus told see almost 50% of the teachings of the lord is in regard with wealth and money he told see you cannot serve both lord and mammon so if you are not serving mammon definitely you will serve the lord so if you are serving mammon you cannot serve lord so sakaus uh, declared his decisions in regard with wealth then jesus because jesus 
was sure that he is going to become all right. So he um, certified that salvation has come to this house. And then on another occasion, see, we have to we have to know how the things are going on. If you are going to Matthew chapter nineteen. So, 16 onwards you read. Now behold, one came and said to him, Good good teacher, good teacher, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not... Be, be a false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all, all these things I have kept from my youth, what do, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect... So you see, let, me, let me tell you, because when, uh, when we are reading, sometimes even my experience and sharing, Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, so people used to tell, this is condition to become perfect, not to become, <laughs> not to become born again. But Jesus is answering, which question Jesus is answering? Yes. The question is, can how can I, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Jesus is telling the answer of his question, how can I possess eternal life? So here, if you want to be perfect, means the simple meaning is if you want to become born again, if you want to become a follower of the Lord, if you want to become perfect, it, it does not mean that you are you are becoming perfect like Jesus or anything. If you want to become born again, go sell what you have and give to the poor. That does not guarantee salvation. And you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. If you are selling your property and giving to, giving to the poor, cannot guarantee your salvation. You get rid of all wealth from within the heart. It does not mean that you should not have wealth. Because this particular case, Jesus, when he is looking intently into his heart, what he, what he had found? He found that his heart is full of love towards money and covetousness. So, see, we cannot hide anything from the Lord. When Lord is looking into our heart, if our heart is filled with the love, worldliness, worldly ambitions, you have to get rid of it, otherwise you cannot serve the Lord. So only he's telling, he told him, go, sell all what you have. You, in other words, see, you have to take the things rightly. You empty your heart, that's the right thing. You empty your heart, then come and follow me. So without emptying your heart, because Jesus wants to occupy the total personality of the individual. It is not 20%, 40%. Even your commitment is 99.99% he will not accept. You have to know it. You cannot deceive the Lord. When he, he is looking internally into our heart, he wanted to see only him and him alone. If you are going to read Psalm 73.25, quickly read Psalm. Also, Psalm 73 25. So, just I am telling about the cases. In the case of Zacchaeus, the Lord did not tell him to sell anything, but he repented in regard with the earthly wealth. Then he told that salvation has come to this house. But whereas this man, when he looked into his heart, is totally loved towards the earthly things and wealth. Then he told him, You have to sell it out. Then come and follow me. Sakaius, he did not tell anything like, I am going to follow you, nothing. But he confessed only his decision in regard with earthly wealth. Then he guaranteed that he is born again. This man, he was sure that he cannot born again unless and until he is selling everything. Psalm 73, 25, read. Whom have I in heaven but you? Yeah. And there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. So there is none upon the earth which I desire besides you. you. That is the heart of a born again person. If your heart is not like that, 
you are to empty your heart then only jesus can born in your heart there is nobody neither in heaven nor in earth besides you whom i like so here in so two cases one the case of sakaus jesus you know sakaus did not tell anything about his faith in the lord nothing he told i am giving to the poor and i am going to restitute the wealth then jesus understood nothing should be added because that clearly says that he is loving the lord his heart condition is okay he recommended that he is born again whereas in this case he he was following all the commandments the same thing when it is written in uh, mark mark chapter 10 he is telling i am following all these things then jesus told the same person mark 10 just 21 onwards then jesus looking at him loved him and just uh, you read from uh, 18 onwards so jesus said to him why do you call me good no one is good but one that is god you know the commandments do not commit adultery do not murder do not steal do not bear false witness do not defraud honor your father and mother and he answered and said to him teacher all these things i have kept from my youth you just think of that person he was totally obedient to all the commandments of the lord definitely jesus felt very uh, he felt very high affection towards him 21 then jesus looking at him loved him and said to him see everybody is free to do their own uh, to decide their faith jesus felt very high affection towards him loved him and said to him the reason a person who is so much sincere to obey the commandments definitely he is having a very good high place in his life god is having a very high place in his life so only he felt a very good opinion about him he loved him and said to him so it is true for in our case also now if somebody is a jewel we are meeting many people if somebody is having a very good conscience towards the lord we want them to rise again no? yes grow in the faith if somebody is very like and not interested we cannot do anything this particular man he is very strict in obeying the commandment then jesus loved him and then he wanted to make him perfect and said to him one thing you lack go your way sell whatever you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me but he was sad at his at this word and when they were sorrowful or he had great possessions see the time of temptation only the real picture will come out so only when abraham offered isaac it is written now i know that you really love really yeah. fear god fear. not love of fear <coughs> you really fear god so the time of temptation how you are responding to different life situations then and then only lord will come to know your real character he was following all the commandments which was not costly or expensive he was doing all this in the same you can see in 21st century they will go take baptism and uh, leave one church and joining another church but the things concerning some uh, the situations where you demand to pay something they will not do it the same thing he was following his honor his father and mother no money is required then no not committing of adultery no money is required then do not murder he was not murdering nothing is no cost to pay do not steal no cost to pay do not bear false witness that also he was not doing nothing to pay because many people are very good followers of the lord where nothing you are to pay nothing you are to suffer in your life but situations when comes you have to pay something maybe not monetarily and you have to sometimes you have to break your relation so many things then people are reluctant so in this case jesus asked, asked him to sell everything he had then he started stumbling so he was thinking why he find it difficult it is because he was very rich for some people so only the earthly riches are not good for a christian or spiritual life now i am not telling that it's bad but it's difficult So, if you are going to James two verse five NIV, if you are reading NIV translation is better. Can you read it, please? James two five. Okay. You 
sent by dear brothers has not got chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to enter the kingdom of the promise those who love, love him. Yeah, it's only read from this one. Listen, my God, brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? So this NIV is giving more elaborate meaning. Once more you read. Lovely. Listen, my dear brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes? Has not God chosen those who are poor in the sight of the world, but rich? Rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him. Yeah. See, if you want to become rich in faith, I cannot say that the rich people cannot become rich in faith, but it's a general principle what you are seeing in the world. Has not God chosen the poor people of the world to be rich in faith and going to inherit the kingdom which is promised? But unfortunately, the believers wanted to become rich. See, I cannot say you, you cannot become rich in faith if you are rich, but Jesus himself told it is not good to be rich to become a good Christian. Has not God chosen the poor people of the world to be rich in faith? So here you are seeing this man when he was asked to sell everything he had, he instead of selling the earthly wealth or leaving the earthly wealth, he left Jesus. So you think about our life. Are we willing to forsake everything for the sake of the Lord? Or we are not willing to forsake anything of this world and wanted to possess the earthly things and forsaking the Lord. See, you cannot serve both Lord and Mammon. This particular man is totally the diametrically opposite of Sakaeus. So the real salvation involves giving to the poor. Giving to the poor, it means you are not loving your own possessions. It does not mean that you are giving 50% or 60% or tithing nothing. You are not loving the earthly wealth and you are willing to give to the needy people and whatever happened in your past life, you are willing to compensate, then yep, you must be come and follow, bearing the daily cross, then you will be saved. So the real repentance, the example given is the case of Sakaeus, and it is mostly it is related to the earthly wealth. And again, and Jesus, no, Peter, no, so Paul, one, one more word I want to discuss, Second Corinthians 8 verse 8. When Paul asked the Corinthians to give money to help the poor, he's citing the example of Macedonians and he's telling, it was said, you read, I speak not by commandment, yeah. but I am trusting the sincerity of your love by the diligent, diligence of others. Yeah, he's telling how your love towards the Lord can be examined or tested. You should know it. Also, you have to know it. Your love towards the Lord is tested by your love towards the wealth. Your love towards the Lord is tested by your love towards the earthly wealth. If you are willing to forsake your earthly wealth for the sake of the Lord, you are loving the Lord. If you are miser, you are loving the uh, money and the earthly things, you are not loving the Lord. So Paul is rightly telling, he is asking the Corinthians to give money to help the poor and he's, he is telling, Thereby, I am testing the yes. sincerity yes. of your, your love. love. So you think about our life. How much we are loving money and how much we are loving the Lord. If you want to accumulate wealth in this world, you are not loving the Lord. That is a biblical standard. So let us not love the world and things in the world. And Jesus is our provider. He will look us after. And if you are seeking his kingdom and his righteousness, all your physical worldly needs will be met. I'm giving my testimony after leaving for the Lord 34 years. And never I planned anything for the future. But as on today, I can faithfully say all my physical needs were met by the Lord. Almost all occasions, miraculously. If Lord is faithful to me, Lord is not a respecter of persons. Definitely I can guarantee each and every one of you he will be faithful to you if you are seeking his kingdom and his righteousness first and telling my testimony to the best of my faith. It may be wrong, but I'm telling you the wrong. 
to the to the utmost sincere sincerity of my conscience i am seeking his kingdom and his righteousness first and the one who is seeking his kingdom and his righteousness first he will never put such a person to shame by all means he will look us after so we can be confident with the confidence let us say the lord is our helper who can be against us we'll sing a song and we'll pray song number 16 Repentance of Zacchaeus. He was willing to forsake his earthly wealth and willing to compensate for the sins of the past. And he he has decided to follow the Lord. Then he assured the salvation. Same way, Lord, let us repent to the standard of the first century and help us to have a Christianity of the apostolic era. Lord, help us not to be deceived by the 21st century Christianity. Help us to grow in the love towards the Lord and help us to be sensitive to our conscience. We are giving all glory to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>